the video is an the video is an My name is Olivia and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for tuning in to this video. Like I mentioned, my name is Olivia, I'm 26 and I was diagnosed with autism two years ago. And here at my channel, I try to make videos to bring awareness to females on the spectrum. In this week's video, I'm just gonna try to give some tips and advice on how to support and help somebody during and after a meltdown. So whether you're a parent, a grandparent, a sibling, a spouse, a friend, whatever. Thank you for tuning into this video to try to better help your loved one with autism, but please do keep in mind that the tips that I'm going to be saying are based off of my experience, of course, since I can't speak for anybody else. So just keep in mind that no two autistic people are the same. So what works for me during a meltdown may not work for your loved one during a meltdown, but hopefully these can give you at least some ideas on the right direction. If you're not completely familiar, with what an autistic meltdown is, I will link a video above that I have done talking about it in depth. But other than that, let's jump into the video. Okay, so first and foremost, oftentimes when an autistic person is having a meltdown, we want to be alone or at the very least in a quiet space. So if we do want to be alone or in a quiet space, help us get there. So for instance, if you're a parent and your child is having a meltdown, what my mom used to do is put me up into my room because she knew that was a safe space and then stand outside my door unbeknownst to me. So if you have a safe space in your house or maybe it's your car if you're out in public, try to help your loved one with autism into a quiet private place. Your instinct when your loved one is having an autistic meltdown may be to try to help them and fix the problem that is causing the meltdown, but try to resist the urge to do that because it's not really going to help because once a meltdown is coming on, it's coming on. I like to say it's like a tsunami. Once it's coming, it's coming. You can't stop it. It just has to play itself out. So you trying to fix the situation or reprimand for having the meltdown is just going to make things worse because at the end of the day, we can't help it. And once the meltdown has started, we just need to get through it. So again, don't try to stop it. Just try to help us get through it. If your loved one going through a meltdown doesn't wanna be alone, make sure you don't get up into their personal space and just automatically go try to hug them or embrace them or touch them in any way because a lot of times people on the spectrum don't like being touched. I'm definitely this way when I'm going through a meltdown. I do not want to be touched. So unless your loved one says it's okay, try not to touch them because that could make things even worse. We have such high sensitivities to senses, one being our sense of touch. So you touching us could just make things even worse. A lot of times during meltdowns, we can become mute and experience selective mutism. This is definitely the case for me. So if during a meltdown, your loved one needs to communicate or wants to communicate, but they can't talk, bring them a pen and paper or a phone, tablet, computer, something so that they can write what they need to communicate with you. A lot of times, even though we can't physically speak, we can still write out what we need to say. Say. Another thing is try not to ask too many questions such as what's wrong. A lot of times we don't know or we can't tell you. So questions can just be irritating and infuriating. For me, I hate when my mom or whoever tries to ask me a question, pretty much in like general, but especially during a meltdown because I can't talk and my body is just trying to save energy. So don't try to be making my brain more confused with questions because oftentimes we can have a hard time uh, describing what we're feeling and making decisions. So any type of questions like, oh, what's wrong or what can I do, blah, 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 can just, again, make things worse. So try not to ask a lot of questions. And if you absolutely need to ask a question, try to make it a yes or no answer so we can nod or shake our head. And now the biggest and most important thing, at least in my opinion, that you can do for your loved one who's experiencing a meltdown is to show them 
empathy. Show us empathy. It is so important. Now I want to make sure to note the difference between empathy and sympathy. We don't need sympathy. We need empathy. My therapist recently showed me this incredible video. It's less than three minutes long and I'm going to link it down below. I would highly, highly suggest you watch it. And if you're autistic, you watch it because it's just super awesome and well put and easy to understand video on the differences between empathy and sympathy. The video is an RSA short narrated by Dr. Brene Brown. Hopefully I'm pronouncing her name right. So this short little video is animated with some animals and it's really cute. And basically one animal is really sad and having a bad day and they're in a dark hole. Another animal comes and shows the sad animal empathy by crawling into the dark hole with them and suffering with them. Another animal comes along and shows the sad animal sympathy by waving from the top of the hole and saying, oh wow, you're having such a bad day, I'm so sorry. It's gonna be fine. Now I ask, if you're having a really crappy day, which would you rather have? Somebody come and sit with you and just really feel your feelings with you or somebody who says, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, but it's gonna be okay. That's not helpful. Saying it's gonna be okay is not helpful in that moment. So basically empathy is going and sitting with somebody and understanding and feeling their feelings with them or making a connection. Whereas sympathy is just kind of being from afar and saying everything's gonna be okay. As I mentioned, resist the urge to try to fix the problem or tell us it's gonna be okay. Again, I know you're trying to help, but it's not helpful. We don't wanna hear that. By you saying, oh, it's fine, or it's gonna be okay, it's not helping in any way, it's just making us feel bad. I already feel guilty when I'm going through a meltdown and after a meltdown. So for you to say, oh, it's fine, it's not a big deal, don't worry about it, is making me feel bad for feeling what I'm feeling. You saying that makes me feel like, wow, what a stupid person for feeling or thinking or reacting how I'm at reacting. So try not to say that because it's not helping in any way. It's just probably making us feel worse. It's like rationally, I know everything's gonna be fine, but I don't need you to tell that to me. I would much rather you just come and say, you know what, yeah, that really sucks. That's so crappy. You have every right to feel what you're feeling. There is a time and a place to say everything's gonna be okay and to try to be positive and motivate us, but that moment is not in the moment. It's not in the meltdown or shortly after the meltdown. After we've made it through the meltdown, we can be very, very exhausted from that experience. So things that you can try to do to help us afterwards is make us some food, make sure we have everything we need, encourage us to do things that make us happy. So our special interests. Definitely try not to make things awkward and further our guilt for doing what we have no control over. Okay, so that is it for my little tips and advice on how to help a loved one going through a meltdown. I hope these have been helpful and can be helpful for you in the future. Thank you again for wanting to learn more on how to help your loved one with autism. Thanks as always for tuning in. God bless. Have a wonderful week ahead and I will see you soon.